the Republican strategy heading into these midterm elections is to borrow that old liberal line about thinking globally, but acting locally, and not just when it comes to school board races, but also when it comes to the administration of elections at a state and local level. Just look at the so-called precinct strategy pushed by Steve Bannon, who is encouraging the pro-Trump far right to take over local posts that supervise the placement and operation of voting locations. While many Democrats are complaining about a national holdup on voting rights legislation, Republicans are working to take over elections from the bottom up. It's a point Ezra Klein makes in his latest column for The New York Times. Quote, in order to protect democracy, Democrats have to win more elections, and to do that, they need to make sure the country's local electoral machinery isn't corrupted by the Trumpist right. But a key way to stop the Trumpist right, ironically, is through federal legislation that gives you one consistent nationwide benchmark for voting and voting rights and voting standards. But so far, nothing can get through the Senate because of the GOP's use of the filibuster. Tomorrow, President Joe Biden is going to Georgia to give a big speech on the importance of voting rights reform. But several civil rights groups, including Black Voters Matter, say they are boycotting the speech because it's time for action, not more words. They're not wrong. But with two Democratic senators refusing to rid us of the anti-democratic filibuster, hello, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, is federal voting rights reform dead in the water? Joining me now is Democratic Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina, lifelong civil rights activist and the House Majority Whip since 2019. Congressman, welcome back to the show. Joe Biden is giving this big speech in Atlanta tomorrow night on voting rights and democracy. He's given a fair few big speeches on voting rights and democracy, but we haven't seen any action as a result of it. He didn't sign a single voting rights bill into law in 2021. Is that going to change, do you think, in 2022? Well, thank you very much for having me. You know, I think that um, what we have to keep in mind uh, is that the issue of voting uh, in this evenly divided Senate and closely uh, margin, uh, close margin majority uh, in the House requires that we spend a little more time uh, trying to get to where we need to be. And I think uh, that when you see 50 Republicans uh, and two Democrats not wanting to do anything with the filibuster, we have to do a little more work, getting them to understand that what they're doing is seeking to deny some fundamental constitutional rights to a significant portion of the American people. Yes. To take for granted. The 15th Amendment said, to the United States Constitution is the commitment that gave the former slaves the right to vote. It was a straight party line vote. It was not yes. bipartisan. And so yes. you're telling me that if a bill that have any legitimacy it has to be bipartisan, that's the history doesn't teach us that. And so I think that so, we have to be very care careful here and carry these arguments. Uh, in a very careful way. And on the filibuster, yep. we're not asking for the Senate to take up the House passed bill. We're asking the Senate, we've already agreed to uh, Joe Manchin's bill, uh, the Freedom to Vote Act. Uh, Stacey Abrams down in Georgia came out and endorsed it right away. I've been publicly in support of it. And that's the bill we're asking to be considered. So Joe Manchin yeah. seems to be supporting the filibuster of his own bill. So that to me, yes. Joe Manchin, as you say, is one of the two Democratic Party big blocks on passing this bill, on passing his own bill, on saving American democracy. You pointed out, as you said a moment ago, that when you look at, for example, uh, the 15th Amendment, it was not a bipartisan vote. It was a straight party vote. Black people benefited from that vote hugely, got rights from that vote. You say history teaches us that. So let me ask you this. Why then does Joe Manchin keep insisting on bipartisanship? Does he not understand the history or is he indifferent to the rights of black Americans? Which is it? Well, I don't know which is, because I can't get into his head. So all I can tell him... But you must have spoken is, to him. Yes, I've, I've talked to him. He tells me that he supports what we're doing. He's demonstrated that he supports it. 
by putting up the Freedom to Vote Act. That's his bill. So if yes. he did not support the Freedom to Vote, why did he put the bill up? So I think that what he's trying to do is have it uh, both ways, and you can't. It seems to me that he's got to decide whether or not he wants his own bill. And if he wants it, then we're here to say to him, give us the two votes that will allow us to change the rules so that we can bring the bill to the floor. And then you can go back home and tell the bill you got your, your bill passed. Last quick question, Congressman, before I let you go. How much time do you think American democracy has left? If Democrats lose the House in November, do you think a Republican-led House come 2024 will even agree to certify a win for a Democrat in the presidential election? And where does that lead to? You know, I've been telling people for some time now, and I believe very strongly, uh, that the filibuster is on its last leg. Now, either we get rid of that filibuster business now, or we will lose the House, and they will get rid of it, the Republicans get rid of it in the next Congress. Because if we do not pass these bills, I don't see how we can have unfettered elections in November where every vote will be counted, where the nullification efforts down in Georgia and other places. This is not about suppressing the vote. This is about nullifying the votes that have been cast. That's what's in this law that just passed down in Georgia. This is about criminalizing, giving people convenience, people standing in line for four and five hours. If you give them a bottle of water, that is considered a criminal offense. That's what's going on here. This yeah. is a throwback uh, to centuries that we thought were behind us. Congressman, thank you for speaking clearly on this issue. I do hope Joe Manchin is listening to you on this. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.